Hi, my name is Carly and welcome to my channel. And today I wanted to talk about the 51 books that I read in 2023. And the one, two, three, four, five, six books that I DNF'd. I give credit what credit is due. I kind of got this idea after watching Georgia Marie do her video. She ranked all the books that she read um, in 2023. And while I'm not ranking them, I was inspired to do this by her video. And I know there's probably way more people out there that have done this video, but that is where I got my idea. But if you guys are interested in very queer content, book related content, I would check out her book channel. These are not in any particular order except for the order in which I read them. I will give my ratings and I will give a brief synopsis of the books I read. So without further ado, I'm just gonna get into it. The first three books I've got here are Kitchen Princess volume 8, 9, and 10. This is by Natsumi Ando. It's a manga. It's about this girl who goes to the special high school for things I can't fully remember but she when she tastes food she can know exactly what's in it and remake it exactly and it's just about her being in the school trying to fit in and making friends. It's super cute. I liked the first half of this manga series more than I liked the second half but it was too cute. Still cute and for kind of my first manga I am glad that I read it. I gave each of them three out of five stars. The next one on this list is The Republic of Thieves by Scott Lynch. Um, this was the third book in the Lies of Lacamora series. I have a reading vlog on this. However, I, I did enjoy it, but the second and third books have not lived up to the first book, The Lies of Lacamora. I gave three out of five stars. So the next book I have on this list is The Blood of Elves by Andrzej Sapkowski. Sorry, I'm very much mispronouncing that. This is, I think, the first book in the Witcher series. In this series, we follow the Witcher as he is trying to not get involved in saving the world, but ultimately gets involved in saving the world. And his relationships he has with Ciri and Yennefer and other characters that come into play. I ultimately gave this one a three out of five stars. I read all the whole series this this past year and I think I gave them all about three out of five stars. Uh, I don't know if it's a translation thing or a, a dated thing. They all felt very dry to me and if you came from the games like I did or even the show I feel like all the characters feel very flat and dry and I think Geralt spends most of the books pretty depressed. Siri wants to be free and so she's doing a lot of odd choices and you know for I think just makes me mad. Those are my thoughts on that. The next one on this list is The Band Bookstore of Maggie Banks. This is by Shauna Robinson. Robinson. This is about a woman named Maggie Banks who is having a hard time getting a job and so she takes her friend's offer to sort of cover her friend at this small town bookstore while her friend is on maternity leave. And in this bookstore, this small town, there's this really famous writer from this area and sort of the overarching tourism ward I would say basically makes it so that this bookstore can only sell the books that this author wrote and not many people are very interested in that and Maggie Banks sets up this uh, black market bookstore there and it goes from there it's a little bit romance it's it's a fun little read would recommend it was pretty cute I gave it four out of five stars on um, this next one is The Time of Contempt uh, this is the second book in the Witcher series. This, I gave this one 3.75. It takes place mostly at this sorceress conclave, which was a little bit more entertaining to read about. Next one is Heartstopper Volume 3 by Alice Oseman, 5 out of 5. If you don't know what Heartstopper is, it follows Nick and Charlie, two teenage boys who meet and fall in love, and deals with kind of bullying, eating disorders, and kind of coming out and coming to terms with one's own sexuality and queerness. It is even though I just said some really hard topics, it's still a very cute and very light and very easy read. Would recommend both the comic and the show. Next one is Migrations by Charlotte McConaughey. McConaughey, McConaughey. This one is about a lady who has just gotten out of prison and it's about her wanting to follow these certain birds. It takes place in sort of the near future where global warming has sort of killed off a lot of wildlife and you switch back and forth between her younger days and the present. It was an interesting read. I think I've realized that when I go into literary fic I am expecting something completely 
different than what a literary fiction gives me and that has been diluting my enjoyment of literary fiction. So my rating here is a 3.5 but I think if I but I think now that I understand that my expectations of literary fiction have been so completely off I don't know that I would give it like a 3.5 3 um, at this time but it was an interesting read and take on these topics. What do I got on here? Husband Material by Alexis Hall is my next one. Three out of five. This is the sequel to Boyfriend Material. It, so it follows those two same characters as they sort of, as their friends sort of get married and they start wondering if that's what they want from themselves. I'll talk about it a little later because I tried another Alexis Hall book that I DNF'd and I just do not think this author is for me. The books are fine. I gave this one a three out of five but I think the characters are just a little too tropey and on the nose for me that it makes it sort of annoying to read. They, I don't feel the depth from them that I want from these characters. Okay next one I have on here is Hide by Alex by Kristen White. I gave this one five out of five. It follows this group of characters who are invited or they applied to be on this hide and seek show and it takes place in an old abandoned theme park and the idea was that every day they need to hide and if they're found they lose and they all think that they are there for this show but instead they all end up disappearing for good. It's a take on the Minotaur myth from Greek mythology I think it is and this is a bit of a horror novel. I'm not usually a horror reader but this sounded up really interesting. And um, what I can sell, see with this book is either people really really like it like me or you really really hated it but I really really liked it. Next one is called A Good Day to Pie by Misha Pop. This is the second book in some series. I can't remember what the series name is. It follows our main character who makes pies. She sells pies but she has sort of this magical ability to imbued certain things into pies and she runs a sort of side business where if people want their like abusive husbands or something dead she will bake a pie that will kill them but make it look more natural and but but besides that she is also solving murder mysteries this one in particular took place on a great british bake-off sort of show and that she was a part of and it was her making things and trying to solve a miss a murder couple murders I think it was that happened during this show. I still really enjoyed this one but I did like the first one better. I gave this one three out of five. I've got next one is Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman. Again really just enjoy the series as a general thing. They all build off one another. I gave this one five out of five stars. After that I read Teen Titans Robin by Cami Garcia. Three out of five. This one followed I guess is Robin but it kind of brought the other Beast Boy and Raven together with Robin as they try to do something. I liked this one more than I had liked the previous ones but this whole series is just falling short for me. I'm not liking it as much as I had hoped because I love the artist but I really like his artwork and so that is why I continue to read them. <laughs> Up next I've got Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. This is the first book in the Shadow and Bone series. I watched the show and then decided I needed to read all the books so you'll see the whole series on here. But Shadow and Bone is the first one. I liked it more than I thought I would for a early 2010s YA fantasy novel. I remember feeling surprised that there were certain tropes that it did not fall into. I gave it three out of five. I don't even know if I can fully explain the plot. The second one on here is Siege and Storm by Lee Bardigo, the second book in the Shadow and Bone trilogy. Again we're just following like Elena and people as they try to defeat the um Ben Barnes character. <laughs> gave that one three out of five stars. Next one is Shore Fall, Shore Fall by Robert Jackson Bennett. This is the second book in the Foundry Founders trilogy. Follows after the first book as our main, as our group of main characters try to change ways of the city that they live in to better the kind of poor homeless people that they are part of but instead a great and powerful being of legend comes back and things go very downhill from there. I really enjoyed this one. I think this is probably like my favorite one but I will go through the whole trilogy a reread at some point but this one I remember I stayed up late just to finish it because I could not put it down. It was so good. 
five out of five stars. Next on this is Ruin and Rising by Leigh Bardugo. Third book in the Shadow and Bone trilogy gave this one three out of five stars, but I feel like I remember I didn't like this one nearly as much as I had enjoyed the first two in the series. After this, the next one is Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo, part of the Shadow and Bone world, but I'm sure a lot of you have heard about it. It's been, it follows a different cast of characters as they try to steal something from a very locked up spot. I gave Six of Crows four out of five. And then next one after this I read was Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo, where we, again, second one in the Six of Crows duology. And I gave that one a five out of five. These two were rereads for me and I thoroughly enjoyed my time with them. Next up was Berserk Volume 1 by Kentaro Miura. I don't even fully know how to explain this when you're following a guy who has something going on and he has a big sword and he fights things. Uh, he's not supposed to be like a good guy good guy but he's also not a bad guy. My brother had like the whole series and I just borrowed it from him because I wanted to give it a try. I only read the first volume. My brother says the first one is not nearly as good as the rest going afterwards but my enjoyment stopped there because I just was not a fan of the art style and so we'll not be continuing. I gave that one 2.5 out of 5. Next one was King of Scars by Leigh Bardugo. This was the second duology in the Shadow and Bone series. I gave this one 3.75 stars out of 5. It follows Nikolai and one girl <laughs> as they try to deal with Nikolai's like darkness within him as well as trying to sort of save his kingdom and stop a war from happening. I wanted to like this a lot more than I did and I think there was just a little too much going on and nothing felt very fleshed out. You also follow Nina from Six of Crows duology as well as she is on a spy mission in the Cold Land. I'm just wow I am really explaining these well. That her storyline deals with her trying to get over what had happened in Crooked Kingdom as well as finding new love. Next one was Happy Place by Emily Henry. You follow this cast of characters, our main character and her boyfriend fiance had broken up but they haven't told their friends and now they are all on a vacation together while her and her ex tried to pretend to still be in a relationship for their friend's sake while rede redeveloping the relationship that the two had. Fred, book lovers, people meet on vacation and beach read by Emily Henry and I liked them all. I still enjoyed this one but not nearly as much as I enjoyed those other ones. I gave this one three out of five. Next one was Baptism of Fire. Again this is in the Witcher series. I think this is the third one. Now three out of five. I don't really remember much of this. Next one is Rule of Wolves, Wolves by Leigh Bardugo. This is the second book in the third duology. It comes after King of Scars. I was not a huge fan of this book. I gave it 2.5 out of 5. It was sort of a mess. I felt like there was so much happening. Nothing felt fleshed out and I didn't really understand what was going on. Something needed to change with that book. It, it was very much a disappointment. Next one I read was Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I gave it three stars. It's about two friends or ex-friends who develop superpowers and sort of what it means to be a good guy and a bad guy. I think those are interesting topics. I'm just a little unsure. Not a little. I just don't think V.E. Schwab is the writer for me because this is not the first book that I read by her that I wasn't a huge fan of. Next one on this list is The Tower of Swallows and The Lady in the Lake. This is book four and five of the Witcher trilogy. I gave them both three stars. They were fine. Indian was a little, was definitely a choice. The Indian was definitely a choice. They had this whole cast of side characters that I did really enjoy and I knew what was going to happen to them and it still happened and I'm still upset about it. Uh, next one is When in Rome by Sarah Adams. I gave this one three stars. It's about this really famous pop singer Amelia who just needs to get out of town. One of her favorite movies I think is called When in Rome and it's an Audrey Hepburn movie and while she can't run away to Rome. She finds the nearest city named Rome which is a very very small town named Rome Kentucky and her car ends up breaking down in front of this man's house and she ends up staying with the man and falling in love with the little man and the home, little town. It was fine. It was cute. It's a romance. There's not a whole much to it because it's a small town romance. Now everyone is in everyone's business and it's 
supposed to be cute, funny, and quirky, and I just did not find it cute, funny, and quirky in this book. Next one, I was on a romance roll during this time period. You'll see um, it's called The Queer Principles of Kit Webb by Cat Sebastian. It's a historical gay romance. It follows Kit Webb, who used to be like a highwayman, and now he isn't, <laughs> and Percy, who is a noble, but um, wants to hire Kit to take out his dad to save his friend. <laughs> it was cute. It was a fun read. I gave it 3.75. The Perfect Crimes of Mary and Hayes is the second book. It comes right after The Queer Principles of Kit Webb. It follows Percy's friend as she falls in love with Kit's old um, partner for robbing. I thought it was cute. Not, I didn't like it as much as I liked Queer Principles, but there were aspects I liked in that Mary and Hayes has a kid and she had a really hard pregnancy and so she is like afraid of any type of sex and being pregnant again and that was something that was very that was I thought interestingly explored in this book and I, for that I enjoyed it. I gave it three stars. This one, ooh, Fake Dates and Mooncakes by Sure Lee. I gave this one 1.75. Every time I think of this book I get mad. It's a queer YA contemporary romance. It follows one my character who lives with his aunt and cousin and his aunt owns a little takeaway food shop and at one point he delivers to this really rich guy and this rich guy friend yells at our main character but the rich guy and the main character end up falling in love or something I don't know and the main character is also entering some type of contest to make mooncakes. The two things felt very disconnected and I never and I didn't feel like the relationship between the two characters were ever it didn't feel natural it didn't feel like the two of them should be like falling in love it was just it was not great and the cousin was also like a huge k-pop fan but it's like the author only knew about blackpink and so yeah it was very shoehorned in was not a huge fan of this book uh next up was a thief in the night by kj charles when i picked this one up i didn't realize it was a novella it follows another like highwayman noble queer romance. I gave this one 2.5. Next one on this li list is called An Unauthorized Fan Treaties by Lauren James. This one is free online. It's a series of like blog posts almost of this girl who is a fan of this certain show and the actors that are in this show. It's very a la Supernatural and it starts out with this character wanting to prove that the two actors are actually in a relationship with each other and then it turns into one of those actors dying. And I really could not put this down. It was so entertaining and I think there's supposed to be an actual book coming out that takes place after this. So enjoyable. I give it four out of five. Next one on this list is Dream On by Angie Hawkman. This one follows follows the main character who is a lawyer, just got a job at a law place, and then it's her really trying to figure out what she wants in life. Does she want to go big law? Does she not? And then she had gotten in a crash before the start of this and lost memories. But when she woke up, she had memories of this one specific guy that she is like convinced was her boyfriend. And no one knows who this guy is. And then she ends up meeting him and he runs a flower shop with his brother. I thought it was super cute. I gave it four out of five. Next one was co is called In the Case of Heartbreak Courtney by Courtney K. I think this one followed a guy who runs a bakery and the bakery is going to be shown on some type of show and then in it all he is having to go to his gma's birthday party and then finding out that their family might not have as much money as they thought and then him like falling in love with his friend who is also happening to be playing at gma's birthday party and the whole family is trying to get them together I gave it two out of five stars. I just was not a huge fan of this. It was, again, just each character felt really tropey and not in a fun way. <laughs> Next one on this was called Funny You Should Ask by Alyssa Sussman. I, another romance that I enjoyed way more than I thought I would. It follows our main character who is a, she's a journalist. And like 10 years prior, she had created this article about this up and coming actor. And they ended up spending like three days together going to parties, movie premieres, and just hanging out as she wrote this really great article. Ten years later, she has now like broken up with her boyfriend. He has come out of like rehab multiple times, trying to make his way back from that. 
and they come together for to sort of recreate the article. I really enjoyed it. The third out kind of breakup was what brought this down half point, but it was still really good. 4.5. Next one was Hither Page by Kat Sebastian. This one I wanted to like a lot more. It follows two characters in like an old country, British countryside town trying to solve a murder and it's queer. It was giving me very like Agatha Christie vibes because it takes place in like I think the 40s or 50s and um, there's like a murder mystery they're trying to solve and it sounds completely in my alley but I had like no idea what was going on the entire time and this is not a long book. Not to mention I didn't feel like the relationship between the two characters, main characters, made logical sense to them getting together. Give this one two out of five stars. Next one on this list is The Priory of the Orange Droid by Samantha Shannon. This follows a large cast of characters who are all somehow trying to stop the world ending. <laughs> I felt like there's definitely characters that were given more book like page time than others, made it hard to remember certain characters. It felt like this book was too long but also too short and that there was so much happening that maybe didn't need to happen but then everything that was happening just felt like it was never given the time to breathe. I gave this one three out of five stars, will not probably be continuing with this series. Next on this list is a it's called Practice Makes Perfect Perfect by Sarah Adams. This is the second book of the Wind in Robe series. It follows the sister of the one of the sisters of the main male lead of the Wind in Rome as she tries to come out of her shell and become more of herself and she falls in love with um, Amelia's bodyguard. I like this one slightly more than Wind in Rome but again this is just like small town and everyone's business is just not was not done well or not done to the way I want I would like it to be done. It's three out of five stars. Up next is A Tempest at Sea by Sherry Thomas. This one is like the seventh book in the Lady Sherlock series that follows um, Charlotte Sherlock as she is in disguise on a boat when a murder happens and they're trying to solve it. Not my favorite of the series but it was still entertaining. 3.75. Next one up is Hopelessly Hooked by Rose Sinclair. This is the Captain Hook retelling, <laughs> but a queer Captain Hook retelling. It's a novella. I got it on a free Kindle day read. I will say it is kind of funny to me that the two Captain Hook retellings I have read have both been queer Captain Hook retellings and the love interest has been trans. Do with that with you what you will. I gave it 2.5. It kind of started in the middle of the romance and you never really got to see that build up which I think made it hard for me to like really feel like the two of them should have been together. Up next is Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey. Another romance. It follows a main character that is trying to save her grandma's favorite like winery while she also tries to run a landscaping business she has and she falls in love with this guy that she had a huge crush on in high school. I enjoyed it. It was a fun, fun time. I will say I can't imagine your first time being on the ground in the middle of vineyards while <laughs> there's a party going on nearby but you know what you do you three out of five stars do plan to read the sequel to this one at some point next was the Lachlan's by Robert Jackson Bennett this is the third book in the founders trilogy I did not like this one nearly as much as the first two I will point out in another vlog that I had but it was felt like they the first two books were really heist based and then this one was suddenly like a 10 year not even 10 years quite a few it was almost 10 years I want to say time jump and now we're suddenly we're reading like an action book and the ending was not my favorite and by ending if anyone's read it I don't mean ending ending I mean epilogue. 3.75. After that I read In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune. This is my third TJ Klune book I read. I did enjoy this. It follows our main character who is human in a world that has now humans are no more. I mean it makes me just overall sad that a human will die and those robots will continue on after his death. I don't know. It's, it's not a huge thing. It's not a thing at all in the book to talk about. It's just, it's a, it's a my thing. But yeah, gave this one 3.75. All right, next up on this list, list is The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. I loved this book. You follow our main character who is a PhD student and then she ends up fake dating one of the Sort of professors who's not her professor at all in any capacity and they're about the same age and who is known to be a real hard ass and a grumpy man. I 
loved this. I love this so much. I was listening to it and I was like kicking my little feetsies all the time. I listened to it, it was an audiobook how I read this, and I ended up just like listening to it on like my way to work. And then I would sit in my car in the parking lot before I'd go up to the office and like listening to this and I could not keep my emotions off my face. So there's multiple other cars with people sitting in them and I'm like trying to like control myself because they're gonna look in my car and see me like being a weirdo. Anyway, I loved it. I loved the grumpy and the sunshine. I thought their kind of relation, like their attraction to each other was very realistic in my opinion. I liked just how much they liked each other and the like ace rep in this that I was not expecting was, oh, I loved it. I loved it so, so much. Oh, it was so good. 4.75, but like, wow. I can't wait to read the more Rally Hazel one, but this one was up next after that was Babel by R.F. Kuang. You follow a character in like the 1800s in London. He has been taken from his hometown in somewhere in China and then he grew up in London raised by this white professor who forced him to learn all these languages and now he is going to Oxford to study at the Tower of Babel basically. And while there they deal with kind of racism and what it means for these languages and they sort of magic they're doing. I think this one had very interesting themes that have left me thinking about them since I finished this, but I just do not think R.F. Kuang is the author for me. It was very much a tell, don't show sort of book, so you never really got this exploration of the themes. It was very much her like telling you what the themes are. But I ended up giving this three out of five stars. Next one up is A Night at the Tropicana by Clayton Chanel. This is another novella that I read. It follows our main character who is reminiscing on a night in the 30s, I think it was, where her family were visiting kind of their sister home in Cuba. And on their last night on this trip, this new, very popular, famous nightclub opens. And so they all go and she sort of has a little fling with a guy there. It was. It was cute. It was an interesting exploration of a culture and people that I am just not very familiar with, but I enjoyed it. Um, I think I would have enjoyed it more if this was longer and things were a little more fleshed out, but all in all, I gave it a three. Up next was Murder Your Employer by Robert Rupert Holmes. This follows, it's hard to say, it follows the three characters and each one of them has a reason to want to murder their employer. All their employers are very awful people doing awful things. And so they all end up going to this school that will teach you how to commit a murder and get away with it. And the school has some very strict guidelines. Like you can't be like a mass murder kind of thing. You can't want to just murder for the fun of it. You, you have to have to ask yourself if murder is like the only way is the only way forward it is like the only choice there like there is no redemption for these people that sounds like a very interesting premise but how it was executed was just not my favorite one of the characters has a sponsor and the sponsor is requiring him to write out what happens and so he is like the main character i would say and all his stuff is in first person notebooks except for like the few occasions where it only jumps to his not being a first person notebook kind of generated and then the other two are some women that I was only told in the third person that never felt as fully fleshed out. I mean none of them felt fully fleshed out and then I felt really bad for just one of the women which as I pointed out the way she did her murder could be transcribed as very transphobic. Her ending just ended up being absolutely horrible like she didn't get the happy ending that the other two got for some reason and that just yeah didn't feel very earned in her direction, maybe. I don't know. I gave it 2.5. I wanted to like it. The, ve the very beginning was fun, but this was just not it. After that, I read Love Light Farms by BK Borson. Follow our main character who owns a Christmas tree farm and some things start happening on the Christmas tree farm right as it's leading up to a very famous social media person coming to the farm to showcase the farm on their social media for a contest. At the same time, she is now having to fake date her best friend whom she is in love with and he is in love with her. I thought this was super, super cute. I felt like, how do I even explain it? I really like a good friends to lovers. I always have. I don't think it's very popular, but I really like it. And this was very much friends to lovers. Really like that they've been in love with each other for many years, but she's always been afraid of ruining their friendship. Like if they were to actually take it to the next step 
and this forces on to take it to the next step. I really enjoyed it. The things that kind of brought this down was that third act breakup when he was very specific, like, we like, I like you and I want to continue dating you. And she was like, yeah, for the next week, right? And it was like, you are not that stupid. As well as things that keep happening to the farm got wrapped up way too nicely. Way, 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 way too nicely. And then the last book that I read in 2023 was Heartstopper Volume 5 by Alice Oseman. Five out of five stars. I can't believe that the next volume is going to be the last one, but I can't wait to read it when it finally comes out. And then the books that I D and F'd go through these quickly because I never actually finished them. This is Why They Hate Us by Erin Aceves, queer YA, about this teen who is wanting to explore his sexuality. I say that questionably. I stopped reading it about the time that he started being like, hmm, maybe my teacher is who I want, is who I like, and then getting flirty with his teacher. And then while I looked up reviews and it said nothing actually happened with the teacher, I was, it still went on longer than it needed to be. And I went, I'm done. <laughs> this one was Paris Dallincourt is about to crumble by Alexis Hall. Another, what should have been like a cute bake off romance. I read one chapter. The character was so over the top with his anxiety. It was awful. And then I read reviews to find out that it's not even a romance. The cover of this book is so romance coded. I, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. One was Mr. Breakfast by Jonathan Carroll. This follows a guy who is given the chance to look at three different versions of his life of what could have been, and then he gets to choose one. I liked the idea, but I was just not vibing with it. Next was Cafe Con Liche. Don't remember anything about it. I think again, I just read by Emery Lee. I just read like one chapter of this and then realized was not really feeling it and then realized that the author wrote a book that I had read and absolutely hated it, and so I just decided not to do it anymore. After that was After Hours on Malago Street. This was a romance that I picked up because my friend was reading it and she said they did it in the first chapter and I was very interested. And then I read the first chapter and it felt very non-consensual, I will say. I think it was consensual but it didn't feel very consensual and I was really turned off by that but I was willing to continue if I thought it was get better and then I read a lot of reviews where it felt where it was kind of continuing that the main character was just mean to be mean and didn't feel that. And then after that I read, I tried to read Your Mean One Matthew Prince by Timothy Janowski. This is about a very rich spoiled kid who tried to buy an island and his famous parents were like this is bad press and so sent him to go spend the holidays with his grandparents who live very normal lives and falls in love with the other guy that's staying with him. Again, I guess they say dude a lot and it felt like the characters were just so one trope. It wasn't funny. It wasn't enjoyable for me to read. I didn't hate this one nearly as much as the other ones. I just went, I'm not really feeling this and we're gonna stop. Those were all the books that I read and attempted to read in 2023. Some I liked a lot more, some I didn't really like. Overall, I think going through all these, I am impressed by the amount of series that I read through. The Witcher, Shadow and Bone. <laughs> yeah, I think it was those two. But those are some massive series to be reading through and I read through both of them fully this year. That's, that's pretty impressive. Overall, I will say some positives was reading through those, those series, but also discovering my love for like romance books. That sounds weird, but like I would have told you I hated romance before this year and then I read a bunch that I did really enjoy and found that I have I do enjoy the genre and I'm excited to kind of continue my exploration of that into the new year but some negatives is I don't feel like this was a very exciting reading year like like there's a few that stand out but like I think overall it was a very okay reading year which is something that I want to explore a little more about why that is and how I can maybe change that in the future. Those are the books I read. Tell me if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, and if you read any of those. And I will see you in another review at some point soon.